That same day was to be the longest and almost the unhappiest in Lewis's life. At 6.30 a.m., he drove out to police HQ and sat quietly in Morse's office, the Harrison case the last thing that concerned him. At 7 a.m., he rang the JR2 and learned that Morse's condition was critical but stable, although he had little real idea what that might signify on the coronary Richter scale. At 1.30 p.m., the consultant looked down on the sleeping man. He sat at the desk there and wrote, Without specific request from next of kin, in my judgment, inappropriate to resuscitate. The nurse beside him read through what he'd written. Nothing else we can do, is there? The consultant shook his head. Pray for a miracle. That's about the only hope. So if he asks for anything, let him have it. Even whiskey? The nurse smiled gently to herself after the consultant had left, for someone had already slipped a couple of miniature Glenfiddichs into the top of Morse's bedside table, and they'd only been the one visitor. Lewis. Morse spoke the name very quietly but quite clearly. His eyes were open, and his lips moved as if he was about to say something. But if such were the case, he never said it and Lewis decided to do what so many people have done beside a hospital bed, decided to speak a few comforting thoughts aloud. You've got the top load of quacks in Oxfordshire looking after you, sir. All you've got to do, promise me, is to do what they say. And what I really want to say is thank you for... But Lewis could get no further. And in any case, Morse had closed his eyes and turned his head away to face the pure white wall. Just a little word from Morse would have been enough but it wasn't to be. At 4.20pm, Morse seemed to rally a little and held his hand up for the nurse. I'm allowed a drop more scotch, he whispered. She put her arm around his shoulders, pulled him towards her and held the glass to his lips. And as he coughed and spluttered, she took the glass away and for a few moments held him closely to her and felt profoundly sad as finally she eased the white head back against the pillows. For just a little while, Morse opened his eyes and looked up at her. Please thank Lewis for me. But so softly spoken were the words that she wasn't quite able to catch them. <laughs> 